If you don't use that setting um, on the GoPro, you have to use it for spearfishing. It's just like a non-negotiable. G'day crew, my name's Luke, and welcome to our spearfishing tips uh, episodes. So in this episode, I'm just gonna have a bit of a chat about filming spearfishing with a GoPro. Uh, the settings that I use, um, what I use to hold the camera in place on my head, and um, using things like um, defogging um, strips and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I'm gonna put my shades on because it's real bright and uh, get into it. So yeah, when it comes to GoPros, I, the first thing that I'd recommend is rabbit mode. If you don't use that setting um, on the GoPro, you have to use it for spearfishing. It's just like a non-negotiable. Um, rabbit mode essentially means that when you hit the record button, the camera's turned off previously it turns itself on and begins to record straight away. So if you're diving down in a school of fish, you hit it, the camera has been off, conserving battery, turns on, you can do whatever, you might you know, not get a fish or you might get one. If you don't get one and you don't want to continue filming, on the way back to the surface, just hit it again, turns the camera off, and you know you can float around for an hour put it on the boat do whatever and the camera's sitting off bear in mind with rabbit mode is that i've found that some it appears to me this is a bit weird but batteries can have an effect depending on the battery can have an effect on how fast the camera turns on one of my batteries in particular if i hit it it'll take eight seconds to turn on and quite a long time to turn off as well. But I have another battery that seems to be really sharp that turns on straight away. And these are all genuine GoPro batteries too. So just bear that in mind with it. Sometimes it may take a while. Bear in mind that with the cameras past like I think Hero 6 or 7, the ones with the big stabilization, they, they have this problem where they sort of completely freeze. Now that could be a real pain in the ass, especially if you've got some nice stuff underneath you to film. Um, with, when that happens, what I do is, I, I, I don't know if this is the way, but I've, I've held down both buttons, counted to 10. And the water time can be a bit weird, so make sure it's a real long, slow, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then try to turn it on, and sometimes it'll turn on. After that, sometimes the camera can be stuck on, but it will record and stop recording, so you can get some footage and then go on the boat once you've sorted it take the battery out, figure it out, maybe change the battery over, take the card out and put it back in or something like that. But those are some things uh, just to bear in mind. The way that I film is I use a head strap. I don't use a, a, um, a mask uh, mount because I want to be able to take the camera off underwater, pass it to my dive buddies if I'm doing something, if I want to film, you know, for example, an octopus coming out of the guts of a fish or just something interesting, pass it to your mates. Um, if you pass it to your mates, just tell them to wrap the strap up and hold it rather than, because quite often what it'll do is it'll kind of float around in front of the lens and screw up all your footage. And um, yeah, basically then it can just go straight on the head and then you can pop it off and then um, film. You can film other things, you can shove it in a cray hole, do whatever you want, and then you have the freedom. Um, what I normally do, like with a, with a nice tight, like a new one, I can wear it. Just bear in mind that it doesn't pop off with your fish smashing past you or anything like that. But if you are just getting into the game and your gear's all a bit foreign, um, the chances of you um, it popping off and you're just not noticing it is pretty high. So um, yeah, just um, bear that in mind too. And I'd probably advise um, tucking it on, under the snorkel. So yeah, before I get into settings, filming settings, I'm gonna talk about the anti-fog strips. Now these are a bit of a lifesaver because the new GoPro housings have a gap. There's like a little hollow area in the lens on the new housings and you can't actually get in there and clean it out to dry it out if you get any moisture or anything in there um, you know it can just instantly because the camera goes in and blocks that area the heat from the camera recording can fog that up and then you've got um, rubbish footage so what I do is I use these little um, strips I had a whole bunch of them come in they basically look like that and they just suck water in from everywhere they actually, these ones all feel wet straight away. I'm not sure if that's because there's a chemical on them that absorbs water and it feels damp or if they've just sucked all the water out of this bag. But um, yeah, bear that in mind. Um, and, and these things are so good because they just literally slip in under the GoPro and they actually hold it nice and tight in the housing too. And uh, lastly with the GoPros uh, is the settings. So I don't film in 1080 because I find 1080p in the resolution 
in the new uh, GoPros to be total rubbish. I don't know if it's something to do with the scaling, with the stabilization. Yeah, it's just shit. So um, I don't want to film in 4K because 4K is just way too heavy. Like the footage is just so bulky and it takes up so much room and I really don't need it for what I'm doing. So I found the middle ground at 2.7K. 2.7K is good because it's nice heavy footage. It's not overly crazy, but you can actually zoom in on fish and um, you can sort of see um, nice details as well when you're zooming in. Um, which is quite good to have that ability on a, on a stationary camera to be able to zoom and see something and then pull out as well. So 2.7K, I film at 50 frames per second because um, for anyone that doesn't know, a timeline, you know, if you're, if you're editing in a timeline, 25 frames per second is about roughly what the eye sees. So if you're filming in 50 and you slow it down by half, you've got a smooth slow motion. Any more than that and it looks juddery, but um, yeah, if you film in a higher frame rate, um, the camera has to bump up its sensitivity because of the lack of light getting into the sensor on, on every uh, frame. And what that means is you get a bit of grain, you can get a bit of noisy footage, especially if it's overcast and dark and you're diving in green water and you're a bit deeper or something like that. So I found the good medium, 2.7K, 50 frames. I use completely standard color on the GoPros. I do a little bit of like grading and um, contrast and stuff like that, but usually it's pretty nice off the camera. Um, I, found, I used the Hero 7 Black and I found that it's a bit blown out, but you can remove the shadows and get some, if you pull your shadows right down in post-production, um, you can get a pretty nice uh, look from it. So um, yeah, if for anyone that's having trouble, like you know, you've gone and spend a hell of a lot of money on a new GoPro and you're going, well, 1080 was nice in the previous GoPros, but now my, it looks like crap, what the hell is going on? Um, that might be the reason. So yeah, that's pretty much covered like the, the basics of it. Um, if you guys have any more questions about like the GoPros for spearfishing, just get at me in the comments and um, I'll do my best to answer them. So, sweet. I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.